AP 120, Lab 10, Topics, Blood Types. All right, so it turns out our cells have their own antigens. They have their own structures on their surface with specific shapes. And our immune response cells go around touching our cells, trying to feel those shapes. So there's the ABO blood system, where if you have type A blood, that means you have A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. If you have type B, then you have B antigens on the surface of your blood cells. If you have type AB, then you have both A and B on the surface of your red blood cells. And if you have type O, then there are no antigens on the surface of your blood cells. Now there's also the Rh factor, which is another important antigen found on the surface of our cells. So to think about the blood types, you can think about the fur on dogs. So he, dogs that have white fur would be O, dogs with black fur are A, dogs with brown fur are B, and dogs with both black and brown fur are AB. So again, antigens on the surface. The fur is on the surface of the dogs, black fur for A, brown fur for B, and white fur because it has no dye in it. It's either black or brown. So technically, antigens are carbohydrates found on the surface of our blood. So type O, type A, type B, type AB. But we're not going to worry about those exact shapes or sugars. Just know that they're surface structures. Now, you get if somebody is being tested for their blood type, um, basically, you take a sample of their blood, and then you expose it to antibodies against one antigen, so antibodies against antigen A, and antibodies against antigen B. And if you see a reaction where it gets all clotted up, then you know you have uh, that antigen present. So if someone with type A blood, antigen A is present. So if you expose their blood to antibodies, anti-A antibodies, then it gets agglutinated, it clots up. But if you expose their type A blood to anti-B antibodies, antibodies against B antigen, nothing will happen. Because again, they are type A. If they're type B, then you expose their blood to anti-A antigens, uh, sorry, antibodies, expose it to anti-A anti antibodies, nothing will happen because they do not have the A antigen. However, if you expose type B blood to anti-B antibodies, then it will get agglutinated, it will clot up, because they do have the B antigen. They are type B. <coughs> now, if someone's both type A and B, they have both antigens. So they'll get a reaction with antibodies against A, and they will have a reaction with antibodies against B. So it makes them type AB. And then, if they are type O, then they have neither antigens. They're not present, no antigens. O for nil, O for zero. So no response to the antibodies against A, no response to the antibodies against B. Now these results are super, super clear. Now the results we see uh, from the lab experiments that we would have done if we were in person aren't as clear, and it's those results that you'll be interpreting for the lab quiz. So I'm going to give you some examples about that in a little bit. First, just a reminder, atom bodies bind to a specific surface structure. So antibodies bind to a shape on the surface of a cell. Anti-A antibodies bind to the A antigen. Anti-B antibodies bind to the B antigen. These antibodies show up when the child's around two to eight months old. They only form antibodies against the thing they do not have. And then, of course, antibodies cause agglutination when they get the wrong blood cells. And an incorrect blood transfusion can lead to death of the patient, which is never a good thing. Again, here's just an image. Here's the antibodies binding red blood cells. You can see they can bind multiple red blood cells. So you end up with this complex of blood cells all clumped together. And those clumps can block blood vessels. And if they block important blood vessels, this can lead to strokes and heart attacks. All right, there's also the Rh factor, which is referred to as being positive. So that means it's present. 
or negative, which means it is absent. So the Rh antigen is either on the surface of the cell or it is not on the surface of the cell. Positive on the surface, negative not on the surface. Now, if we go back to our dog analogy, then we can say uh, long-haired dogs are Rh positive, short-haired dogs are Rh negative. So these dogs have short hair, so this is O negative and A negative. This dog has short hair, so he is B negative. This dog here has long, fluffy hair, so that's O positive. And these two dogs have relatively long hair, They're both brown and black fur, so they are A, B positive. Again, the fur is on the surface, just like antigens are on the surface. And that's in case you didn't believe me. I labeled it, making it more believable. All right, Rh is also known as the D antigen. We're primarily going to call it Rh, but if you use D, I will accept that. So you can either say anti-D antibodies, or you can say anti-Rh antibodies. Basically, people who are negative, or Rh negative, do not have antibodies against the Rh factor initially. They have to have a first exposure before they develop those antibodies. However, when you have a patient in the hospital needing a blood transfusion, you have no idea if they've been exposed to the Rh antigen. So you just assume if someone is Rh negative, you must give them Rh negative blood. All right, so for the blood type uh, lab activity that we get to do when we're in person, uh, basically, you have this little tray. It has three little wells. You put um, anti-A antibodies in well A, anti-B antibodies in well B, and anti-RH antibodies in well RH. And then you have a vial with some patient's blood, not real blood, and you um, put two drops of it into each of the wells. You stir really well the toothpick and you wait to see if you see something that resembles agglutination. So here is an example of a test result. A well, B well, and the RH well. So what blood type is this? It's A positive. Glutination clearly seen in A well. Glutination clearly seen in the RH well. Nothing seemed to have happened in the B well. A positive. Here's another example. A well, B well, RH well. The blood type is AB positive. Clear agglutination in the A well, clear agglutination in the B well, clear agglutination in the RH. So again, we are adding antibodies against that antigen to that well. So only if the antigen is present do we get agglutination. Antibody against A went in, caused something to happen. So antibody antigen A is present, A blood type. We put uh, antibodies against B in the well, something happens, so the B antigen is present. And we put antibodies against RH into the well, something happens, so RH is present. All three are present, A, B positive. All right, what about this blood type? Again, well A, well B, well RH. This is B positive. Something happened in the RH well. Something happened in the B well. Nothing happened in the A well. So B positive. And then this one, mm, a little trick here. Turns out this one is O positive. Don't really see anything happening in the A well. Don't really see much happening in the B well, but in the RH well, it does seem to have glutinated. So that makes this positive. So no A, no B, so that's O. Zero, absent, not there. And then positive because we do see the RH factor. All right, reminder, you can donate blood to anyone who has your same antigens or more. So I can give someone blood they have the same blood type as me, or one that has the same antigens are more. So I, Adam, has a blood type of A positive. So I could give my blood injected into someone who's A positive, 
or into somebody who's A, B positive. Same antigens are more and more who I personally can give blood to. Me, my blood, who can I give it to? A positive, A, B positive. That's it. Then you can receive blood from anyone who has your same antigens or less. Again, I, Adam, have a blood type of A positive, so I can receive blood from anyone with the same antigens or less. So I can receive blood from A positive, pretty obvious. You can get some blood from someone with the same blood type. You can get blood from someone who's A negative. They have the A antigen, I have the A antigen. They do not have the RH antigen, so I don't worry about it. Uh, o positive, I can receive blood from O positive. They don't have any antigens for AB. They don't have either of those. I don't care. That's fine. They do have the RH antigen, but so do I. So that's fine. And then O negative. They don't have any AB antigens. They don't have the RH antigen. Even though I have A and RH antigens, I don't care. This is great. Give me that O negative blood. So again, I can receive blood. I can get blood from people with the same blood type or less in terms of antigens. Same or less. A positive, A negative, O positive, O negative. All these kinds of blood I can receive. Give me some B blood and I am dead. Do not do that. All right, again, universal donor is O negative. They do not have any antigens. Their blood vessels are smooth as a baby butt. So they can give blood to anybody. They can give blood to anybody. Universal donor. Give blood to absolutely anybody. Universal recipient or acceptor. That's A, B positive. They can receive blood from anybody. They have all the antigens. They can only give blood to another A, B positive person, but they can receive blood from anybody of any blood type because they already have all the antigens. Not going to be any shock. All right, here is um, a question. All right, what blood type is indicated by D? So here is column D. What blood type is this? Here are your options. It's O. No antigens on the surface, neither A nor B, so it is O. Now, I wish they included the RH factor in the question, but oh well. As you can see, someone with blood type O has antibodies against A and B. Someone with blood type A has antibodies against B. Someone with blood type B has antibodies against A. Someone with AB blood type has no antibodies. You don't want to attack your own blood. Hemolytic disease of newborn is when the mother is RH negative and the infant is RH positive. So the first child that the mother's pregnant with, who is RH positive, at some point their blood will go into the mother's bloodstream, exposing her to the RH factor. She will then produce antibodies against the RH factor. And then if she has a second child who is RH positive, those antibodies toward the end of the pregnancy can actually cross the placenta and attack the fetal blood, leading to severe anemia, severe health issues for that second child. Luckily, nowadays, um, they test for these sort of things, and there's actually a treatment to prevent the mom from having her immune system attack the infant's blood. So if they, she has the antibodies against RH, then she's giving anti-RH antibodies, can cross and attack the fetus's red blood cells. That would be bad. So RH negative mom now has antibodies against RH. So those anti-RH antibodies could attack the fetus's blood. But if you give her antibodies against the anti-RH antibodies, then they can't cross. They are too wrapped up in being bound by these other antibodies. And that helps keep the infant safe. Uh, emergency room patient, it's been an animal accident, unconscious, medical history unknown, blood type B positive, which would be safe to administer? That one, that's it, the same or less, B plus or less, B minus is less than B plus. All of these have A, all of these would kill them. That's it.